Um, this video is for Ariana, who is working on uh, the E major sonata, unaccompanied sonata by Bach. Um, now, we, we had this in our lesson the other day, so we're just going to do a little review on top of that. We start off in fourth position. Find your, um, find your E. You can do it with the harmonic. Put your fourth finger in it, on it. And then I would suggest right now, since we're really, we're just getting really familiar with playing in position. Find the E and come down D sharp, um, C sharp, and then B. Because your first finger is going to be on B, on the uh, B um, that's above your third finger A, right? So that's the top of your E major scale. So um, we're going to start there. And right now, while we're learning this, I do everything with separate bows and then get the bow into. So we're going to start. It's really important to leave that first finger on the B. That's why I suggested going right now just to kind of get your hand set where it's supposed to be, right? So you're going to play first finger down on the B. And then on the open E, you'll shift down. And when you start this business, take that first finger and put it on both your A and your uh, E string. Now to do that, remember you put your arm under the violin. Now I'm trying to fix, <clears throat> my studio is a little awkward, I'm trying to fix it so you can see my um, fingers. So you really got to get your, your arm under the violin because you're going to be leaving your first finger down on the A and the D and you're going to be putting your fingers down on the D so you can make that little tunnel for the string to be able to vibrate through. I got, I'm not looking at the music, so we're going to go, um, and then after, on the E string, shift after three. And this is just like your scale, uh, the scale fingerings you've been practicing. You're going to go from first position, then four, and leave that, leave your first finger down on that B. Um, now I use, I put my first finger down on both strings. In this edition, it suggests that you can play that open E. So let's see how that goes. Now, that's not such a bad idea, actually, playing that open string there. I need to number my measures. Uh, in measure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. In measure ten, actually, that's not such a bad idea. Because it will set you up for measure 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. By using that open string, it sets you up for measure 13. Okay? Now, measure 13, what's your, what, um, um, so you're going to be playing, uh, your, I think your third finger will be on the uh, G. So you're going to, right there, measure 13, you're going to play three, one, three, one. That's the first um, beat, right? And then you're going to move your first finger down a half stop. So you're going to go, here's what you're going to be doing with your left hand. You're going to be playing three, one, move first finger down a half step. Then you're going to stay right there. One, two, three, one, two. Then you're going to 
going to shift with two up a third. Then you're going to shift down a third with your second finger. That's what you're doing. All right. So uh, starting in measure 13, shift down one, two, three, one, two. Shift up when you're playing that open E to. In one, two, three, one, two. Shift down two with your second finger back where you were. Right? So you're so what you're doing with your left hand, you're gonna be playing at starting measure 13. Three, one, shift back. One, two, three, one, two. Take the second finger, shift up while you're playing that open E. Shift back on two. Shift up on two. And stay there. All right? So that's what your hand is doing. So I would suggest practicing it, practicing that whole part starting here. And just practice your left hand. Shift. 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 Right? And then put the bow chain, the uh, chain, um, put the bow, the bow chains with it. <laughs> it's, it's trippier, isn't it? Right? And then um, the next measure gets tricky. Now they tell you to play two, four, right? Two, four, two, four. So let's just do the left hand part. Um, Cause you're gonna be hitting that E string also, but let's forget about the open E string. Let's just kind of figure out what we're doing. So you just finished playing, um, right? In measure 13, 14, 15, 16, right? I hope I got these measures right. You just finished doing the last part of that little business. Um, right? Hang on, Steve. <coughs> Usually they come in twos. Yep. <coughs> yep, that's it. Um, so you um, so you have first finger on the F sharp. Okay, and then they want you, in my book, they want you to put your second finger... You're going to be put your two on the A and four, right? Okay, so you're going to be putting two, four, two, high three, two, normal three, right? Just practice doing that. Leave your two down, don't move it. That makes life easy. So you're going to play. Two, four, you really got to get your arm under. Two, four, two, high three. Okay. Okay. Then you're going to put, um, you're going to take uh, three, and you're going to switch places basically with your fingers. You're going to put three on the A, and you're going to put two on the two on the D. All right. So let's start again. So you're going to play two, four, two, three, two, low three, then take your three and put it on the A string and put your two on the A, uh, e, a D string. Right. And then you're going to play uh, three, one. Leave your three there and play three, one. And then you're going to put your two on the A and play two, one. Then you're going to Go into a finger exchange with three. Put three where two is and play three, one, then two on the A, one, and then do a finger exchange again and play three, one, two, one, do it again, three, one, two, one. That's what you're going to do. All right? Let's review that because that's really tricky. So you just finished doing. Um, You just finished doing that. So all you're going to do is put two down on the A. So the next sequence, you're going to put two on the A and four on the D. And the next, you're going to put leave two down and put three high on the D. 
and then you're going to move three down. Then you're going to take your third finger, move it across to your A string, and move your second finger to the D string. And then you're going to leave three down and play one on the D, and then play two on the A while you leave one down. Then do a finger substitution, put three where two is, and put one on the D, then play two on the A, and do the same thing, finger substitution, finger substitution. That's what you're going to be doing. All right. I'll try to remember to write that out really simply so that you will see that. Now, to me, the challenge with this part we're working on right now is the bow. It's always been a challenge for me. So hopefully, now that you're learning it, I can learn it with you. The bow is tricky because while you're doing all this stuff with your fingers, your bow has to automatically be doing this simple, this not so simple stuff. Before, it wasn't so bad because you were only you having to worry about two strings. Down on the, on the lower string, up on the E. Right? That was easy. Now you have to deal with three strings. So always been going down on the A, up on the E, always down on the A, but then you have to go up on the D. So you're going to be going down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Down, up, down, up. This is very difficult for me, too, because it's the it's the um, the string level change that's tricky. So I've been really giving this some thought. How would I practice this? If I had knew I had to perform this at some point, now I can sort of fake it a little bit, and it and it, it sounds probably sounds right, but you know, faking is not good. You got to have a basis to fake a punt. So I thought, you know, so we have to go. Remember, you're always gonna be down on the A, but on the E and the D, you'll always be up, down, up, down. So I was looking at this, this thing with the arm changing string level. So I thought, well, what if I keep my, my arm on the A level and just... So that way I'm on the A level, but I'm dropping my arm from the, four, from the elbow to grab that E, going back and then tipping my arm to the D. That seems a little complicated. So I thought, well, why do I put my, my, my arm on the E and not worry about dropping my arm to the E, worry about the other string? So I tried that. And that also seemed a little awkward. So for me, <coughs> I discovered, you know, I always tell you to play with a low arm. <coughs> well, I think in this case, for me, it works better if my arm is on the D level. I think the um, jury's still out on that one for now. So you've got to find the place in your arm where you feel like, because I don't think that moving your arm like this is going to be the thing to do. I think it's going to be a, a matter of staying on the string and rolling as you do it. Um, so I think the best way to practice is bowing. And you know that I like practicing bowing separate from fingers because the bow is really the important part. The fingers in this case, even though they're doing some pretty, you know, it's not in your comfort level yet, um, they're not really doing anything very difficult. They're not moving very much. Your bow is doing a lot of moving. So this is one of those times where you get yourself in one of those quiet spaces in your head and you practice rhythm. Okay? So... I would practice A, A, and during the stop, get the A, 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 practice it with a rhythm, and maybe then go, uh, you're going long, then I kind of keep it about not quite the well maybe upper middle no lower middle excuse me I'm, I'm looking at a TV screen so everything's backwards right so first of all I'd go long short long short long short long short long short and do it slow enough leave your bow on the string make sure it doesn't pop off so I'm going long 
long short, I'm doing the A long. Let's do the A short. <laughs> you need to do it more okay and then maybe try a different with like um Gonna be up bow on your D and on your E, so always be down your A. Now, what you're building is not muscle memory. I hate hearing those two words together muscle memory. There's no such thing as muscle memory, there's no such thing as muscle memory. It's all memories here. All memory. There's no such thing as muscle memory. I guess unless you're a frog, a dead frog laying on a table and someone puts a jolt of electricity through you and their legs jump. I guess that's muscle memory, but we're not dead frogs. We're human beings with a brain. So what we're doing, we're building the pathway of, of it's, like, it's like one of those things called servos that robots have. We're, we're building servos, right? Getting our servers working. So I would practice that. Just take the time. You know, we're not in a big hurry. We don't have a concert coming up. Take the time to let's learn this piece very, very thoroughly and also learn the skills required to play this piece, which will, can be applicable to other pieces. And if you practice carefully, then um, my camera went off, then the um, then it will be careful. It'd be easy to. Um, yeah, camera went off. Um, it'd be easier to do this. I may be having performance issues. Oh, that well, I'm going to take that personally. <laughs> I hope you saw that. That was kind of a shock. So I would practice that part. Um, and then you can put your fingers with it. Um, so you're going on. So you're going to go. hard apply yourself to it and that is something I'm going to be practicing that this week too I think it's actually easier to go fast on it but let's not let's let's make ourselves work on that all right you know when you think about it too I'd be very interested to see how much less difficult this would be played on an instrument that was played during the time this music was written Believe it or not, our violins that we play now are slightly different than the violins that were played at the time that this was written. Um, what were the differences? Well, number one, the bows look totally different. The bows look like uh, the bow and arrow kind of bow. The stick was was this way, but like and this was like straight, of course. But the stick was bent more like that, like that. Um, so it was a different kind of stick. And on top of that, Baroque violins um, and violas and the like had a much flatter bridge. You know, our bridge has got a, I got my needle, so I want my humidity. See how our bridge has got a curve in it? Their bridges were much, much, much flatter. 
So they didn't have the string level problems to the extent that we do. Uh, it was much less arm motion to get to the string levels. But we play this music, so um, we have to practice it. So just practice that very slowly. You, you're really, you're really, your brain is like a steel trap. I know you can do this. And um, we'll get back with this next week. All right. And also the uh, the um, uh, viola piece, the prelude, which I know you're going to love that. And you can find many recordings of both these pieces on the internet. All right. Practice.